Yesterday, I had my first attempt at doing a gluten-free seitan. Now, I'd actually planned on doing this one, but because it needs tofu, it hadn't, the tofu hadn't defrosted in time. <laughs> so I had to pivot and do the other one first. This recipe is from a virtual vegan. I'll put the link to the original in there. So I'm gonna base the substrate on their recipe, and I'm just gonna change up some of the flavors and a couple of bits and pieces. I remembered that I bought these. Well, these are corn husks. It's the outside of an ear of corn. And papery, it feels like, sort of like raffia paper almost. So I'm soaking some of these and I'm gonna make some tamale type things with some of the mixture. So I'm just soaking some in boiling water just to soften them up a little bit. Crucial stage of this recipe, according to the original author, is to freeze your tofu and then defrost it. If you're defrosting it in the fridge, allow two days at least, or just let it defrost on the counter. <laughs> so you don't have the same problem I hit today. Even this morning, it still had little bits of ice inside it. All you need to do is just take the, the whole packet and put that in the freezer. Just bear in mind that it's gonna swell a little bit, so don't pack it in there too much or you might rupture the packet. Uh, and then just take it out and defrost it and then slice it up. Here is my tofu press. All you need really is a hard board, and then you want some heavy stuff on top. You need 700 grams altogether. Tear into small pieces. Freezing tofu gives it a radically different texture. It goes much tougher and a bit sponge-like. So it forces all of these little holes into it. Once all the tofu's crumbled in, it's time to start adding the rest of the dry ingredients. I need half a cup of tapioca starch. Tapioca starch is a very, it's a very silky feeling product. I use it in vegan cheese making, so it gives a really nice stretch. Six tablespoons of psyllium husk. And this is kind of a, a pale brown, slightly bitty, product but it's quite common in gluten-free baking and when you add water to this it swells up four tablespoons of nooch nutritional yeast so we need the recipe says four teaspoons of thyme so we'll see how much i've got in here the original recipe says to use sage i don't have any so i'm going to use marjoram it's not necessarily similar but this is it's a smell and aroma i associate with chicken so two of those two teaspoons of onion granules Original recipe says five cloves of garlic, but some of these are very small, so I'm just gonna chop all of those in. But it's about the equivalent of five. One and a half tablespoons of the chicken flavor one. So it's that one. Half a teaspoon of black pepper. I'm gonna use some of this, which is celery powder. I dehydrated a bunch of celery in the dehydrator and then powdered it. So this, I just think has got really chicken flavor, when you, especially when you combine it with lemon. I'm gonna put in a teaspoon of that. I'm also gonna use some of this, which is chickpea miso with lemon. I did a visit to the Brass Castle Brewery up in Malton in North Yorkshire. And one of the brewers there is big on fermentation and makes all his own miso and kombucha and all sorts. And just happened to have a tub of this and was like, oh, here, take this. And it just tastes incredible. Like chickpea miso with lemon rind, like a heap teaspoon, maybe a teaspoon and a half. So I'm just kind of scattering it around. The final ingredient is eight mushrooms. Now the original specifies chestnut, shiitake or crimini, and I think they want fresh. I didn't have any fresh, but I do have dried shiitake, so I just poured boiling water over it. So I'm just gonna squeeze them to get out as much moisture as I can, and then tear those in as well. And then I'm also gonna save the mushroom liquor and I'll use a bit to bind the seitan if, if I need to. And if whatever I don't use, I'll probably put it in the freezer because then you can use that in cooking. So that's all of the ingredients in. So I'm just gonna put the lid on and blitz that up. The instructions are to grab a ball of it and squeeze it and see if it stays together. It does, but it is a bit, it's a little bit crumbly. So I think I might put in a little bit of the, um, the mushroom liquor, see what that does. But it smells amazing. <laughs> it smells really, really good. I love that in while it's running. I'm having a problem with the food processor. There's so much in there that the bit on the sides just aren't mixing, they aren't blending. So I'd potentially do this in two batches. But what I think I'll do is pull everything out into a bowl and then mix it by hand. I think I'll put in another two teaspoons of the mushroom liquor. Try and sprinkle it on a little bit. And then toss it in. And squeeze test again. 
yeah, I think that's, I think that's pretty good. I'm going to take out some for the tamales. I'm going to reuse a bit of foil from yesterday. I might need to double wrap it. We'll see. But I am going to oil it this time. So I'm just pouring oil onto a paper towel and then rub it on. And then place them in there. And then wrap it loosely, not too tightly at all. Scrunch up the, the ends like that. And slide it on the baking sheet. So I'm going to slide this into the oven. It's been preheating at 200 degrees C, 400 Fahrenheit. Slide this in. That's going to be in for 35 minutes, and then I need to flip it over, put in for another 35. For the tamales, I'm going to keep it fairly simple. I've got frozen peas and frozen corn. It's still a little bit frozen. <laughs> It'll be fine. And then I've got some rice noodles here that were left over from dinner a while ago. I've stuck them in the freezer. I pulled them out and defrosted them. So I'm just, because they're long, I'm just going to go in with scissors and snip them up. So this is about 190 grams of the mixture. About 100 grams of rice noodles. And then there's about 45 grams of sweet corn and 45 peas. Give that a mix. They're very theoretical, I've never used these. So I'm just patting it dry a little bit. Grab a handful of the mixture. So I'm going to fold down the top end, roll up on the side, and wrap it nice and tight. And I'm going to double wrap these just in case it explodes. And I think I'll tie that with some string. Tucked both ends in on the final roll. Tie them off. So my four little parcels are done. Let's go and pop them in the instant pot. There's a little bit of water at the bottom. These in. And then putting them on for two hours on high pressure. So I'll leave these two to do their things and then we'll have a quick check-in once the oven ones are done. So the seitan was in the oven for about an hour and 10, flipped it over halfway through and then it's just been sitting on a rack for about 15 minutes. Let's have a look inside. Mm. It's kind of springy, so it's soft, but then it bounces back into shape. I'm gonna slice a little piece off. This definitely is gonna be better once it's cold, but you know, just have a little. We'll see. The texture, it's got quite an open structure. Mmm. That flavour is really good. That would be really nice for like a chicken Kiev. Mm. So maybe you don't put the garlic in the mix. I just put garlic, butter and herbs in the middle. But it's nice and moist, not too dry or anything. So it's got some stretch to it, which will be, I think, from the tapioca. I think that would be really good as a sandwich meat. Mm. Yeah, as soon as I put it in the oven, I thought mm, I didn't put any salt in because the original recipe puts the two tablespoons of soy sauce and I only put in like a, you know, one and a bit tablespoons of miso. So I'd maybe do half a teaspoon of salt, maybe a teaspoon if you like it exceptionally salty food. The idea popped in my head as I was lying in bed last night. Because this doesn't need kneading, it is going to accept things being put in it much easier than it would be if you're trying to then knead the gluten. So I think putting seeds in here would work quite nice. So maybe toasted pumpkin, uh, maybe some sunflower seeds, anything like that. Maybe even some flaked almonds would be good. You know, just to give differences in texture as you bite into it, that would be quite nice. I'm going to leave this to cool down completely and then I'll put it in the fridge overnight. We're September 6th. So I think, if memory serves, or about a week, maybe 10 days since I made the seitan. I'd fully intended on putting it in the freezer, <laughs> like I did with the other ones, but I've just left it in the fridge and been nibbling on it. So I have this amount left. Once it was cool, the texture goes quite dense, quite nice and firm, and it's, yeah, it's just great for snacking on. Uh, it definitely needs more salt. But because there's minimal salt in here, it lends itself really well to like a soy sauce dipping sauce with soy sauce, Shaoxing rice wine, and I think some mirin and some toasted sesame oil. 
spot on. Just dumped it in that. And it also goes really nicely with some Dijon mustard. So I've just been slathering different things on and trying it. The little parcels that I made, I was just way too hungry by the time I got to dinner time to film it. <laughs> so I just mullered them and uh, took a picture, which I'll slot in here for you. The texture was a little bit almost chewy. So I think that's going to be really nice as a dumpling filling maybe with some fresh ginger and spring onions in there, maybe some seeds, something like that. And then this as well, I'm going to do a version a bit similar to the purple tempeh that I made. So black rice and then lots of different seeds and nuts. And I think that will not only effectively double the amount of product, but it's gonna give loads of different textures because it's, you know, it's just one constant texture throughout that just can be a bit boring. So I think adding different seeds and other crunchy bits in there will work really well. I think this will also lend itself quite well to like a beef wellington substitute. So making this and then perhaps some of the smoked mushroom pate I did a video for, I'll stick a link up. Smother that on the outside and then wrap the whole thing in puff pastry. I think that's going to be delicious because there's enough uh, lightness in texture that it's not going to just be a solid thing to chew on especially if you maybe do with the seed ones. When I come to do the edit, I'll pop in a little cost breakdown so you can see how much it costs to, to make this kind of thing. The most expensive thing in there is gonna be the tofu. The teff flour and the psyllium husk are somewhat pricey, but then you're only using a very small amount of those. So probably, I reckon pound for pound, kilo for kilo, it's gonna work out similar to meat, maybe a bit cheaper, a little bit cheaper than meat. So I'll stick that in there for you. For more sandwich filler and midnight snack attack satisfying ideas, hit subscribe, tap the bell icon, and I'll land straight in your inbox.